redeemed of the Lord say so because the world needs to know let the redeemed of the Lord say so because the world needs to know let the redeemed of the Lord say so because the world needs to know let the redeemed of the Lord say so because the world needs to know greetings welcome to say so where we talk about it whatever it is because what you do not know can hurt you so let's get to the root for today's episode we're going to start a new series on the orphan spirit and actually the previous series of episodes on love is what sparked the um research and sparked uh me to want to delve a little more into the orphan spirit. And I was listening to, I believe something on YouTube and I got confirmation. I believe it was a sermon or something and they brought up the orphan spirit. And if I can recall correctly, I heard first of all of the orphan spirit on one of Cindy Trim's messages. And she uh, gave a little bit of her personal testimony saying that she struggled with that spirit or became aware at some point that she had the orphan spirit. She was one of many children. I mean, she was the last of many children. And um, she goes into a l- briefly her experience with the orphan spirit. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and begin. So you probably are curious as to what is the orphan spirit. And I'm going to do... Um, the definition of what a actual orphan is, and I'm actually, and then delve into the orphan spirit because they are two different things. All right. So the definition of an orphan, um, after I Googled it is basically someone whose parents are dead, or, um, it can also be that like one parent is dead or one is not active, etc. So single parent households would qualify, um, as maybe battling with the orphan spirit. And the definition of an orphan spirit is that, um, well, I'm going to go into uh, some information that I found on Behind the Chair Ministries. And you can actually look that up or Google it. And we're going to go into it. So it pretty much says that the orphan spirit, most people are unaware of this debilitating spirit and its effects on their emotional stability and relationships. So basically what this is saying is you'll be on an emotional roller coaster with ups and downs because of this orphan spirit. And as we delve more into it, you'll understand why and how this comes to be. It also talks about, um, it asks the question, what is an orphan spirit? It is a demonic spirit that invades a person's mind, causing them a sense of abandonment from their past hurts and experiences. Now, it attacks the mind and the emotions of individuals suffering with abandonment, rejection, and great disappointment. Now, an orphan spirit basically attaches to a person who has experienced extreme rejection. Now, there's a difference between experiencing something And experiencing it to the extreme. So you might be asking what is um, extreme. Extreme basically means reaching a high or the highest degree. So it's the highest degree of rejection. It's not just somebody saying, I don't want to be your friend. It's compounded usually. And it um, is very deep. It runs the root of rejection can run very deep. Now, rejection basically means to push someone or something away. Um, So it's important to know that the orphan spirit creates separation. It creates worry. It creates anxiety and fear. Now, once this spirit enters into a person, it becomes a stronghold in their mind. And it remains there until a new foundational truth of the word of God is formed. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a stronghold? Because they talk about a stronghold being in your mind. Okay. So a stronghold is a place where a particular course or belief is strongly upheld. Now you may be um, asking, they talked about the only way basically 
to get it out or for it not to remain anymore is um, a new foundational truth. Now, we know that the Bible says um, in the New Testament book of John, chapter eight, verse 32, it says that ye, ye means you and me. So we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. So that's how we know that the stronghold will be strongly and securely in place unless or until there's a new foundation of truth. And how do we break and destroy that? With the word of God, because the word of God is true. The word of God also says, let God's word be truth and every man be a lie. So we know this is the foundation of truth that we stand on as believers. Now, the word of God is formed, right? And it says... um, it is a mental fortress. We're talking about the orphan spirit. It's a mental fortress. And it's not, if it's not corrected or torn down by the individual who accepts it, it will continue on to the next generation until someone stands in the gap to say no more. All right. So as it pertains to what a mental fortress is basically anything mental is just related to your mind and specifically the definition said disorders of the mind so um we can think about mental health uh diagnoses and mental illness even they are disorders of the mind and disorder just means that something is out of order and we know that the word of god says let all things be done decently and in order but when something in your mind gets out of order it can cause you to think differently it can cause you to behave differently and things of that nature as a result to the disorder in your mind so mental fortress so this is a fortress in your mind or in our minds All right, so a fortress is basically a military stronghold. Now, we talked about what a stronghold is. It's basically something that you defend and uphold. It's a thought process, right? So this is not just a stronghold. It's a military stronghold. So when you think about military, you think about that, number one, there's several troops. There's several people in the army, several different branches in the military. So it's stronger in that it's more uh, fortified. So it's a military stronghold, especially a strongly fortified. um, Let's see. It talks about um, being a strongly fortified town. So think about a town. Think about how many people or individuals can inhabit a town. So when we go from stronghold to a fortress, that's a multiplicity of honestly spirits is what we're talking here. Um, so not only do, are you, uh, challenged or grappling with or wrestling with the orphan spirit, if you have the, have had the stronghold and it's evolved or progressed into a mental fortress, then you have a whole town of spirits that are, um, residing on the inside of your mind and your thought processes. And that may be the cause of a lot of mental illness and mental health disorders, diseases, and conditions, because there's so many spirits, um, in one place and to move forward. It also, and once again, I want to go back to it saying that it's going to stay in place and it's going to continue until the next generation, until someone stands in the gap to say no more. And the person that will stand in the gap to say no more is the generational curse destroyer. And my hope and my prayer is that I'm speaking to the generational curse destroyer on the inside of you. If you're um up in your family and you notice patterns and you notice how something goes from the daughter to the to the mother to the granddaughter or comes uh, to the grand from the grandmother to the daughter, to uh, her daughter, et cetera, et cetera. And you see these patterns and you understand and know that it is not something that you desire to see or continue to see in your family, then you might just be the generational curse destroyer. If you're the black sheep, you don't fit in. You don't think like everybody else. You're not like everybody else. You can try to fit in, but you just do not because you're just different. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're unique and God made you that way. He made you to stick out and not to conform. So this is for the generational curse destroyers and you destroy the curse um, or the curses in your life and the patterns of your bloodline specifically. Now, it talked about one of the things that um, that the orphan spirit uh, basically holds to or causes in addition to separation, worry, anxiety. The last one was fear. And let's remember the acronym that fear is false, F, false. E, 
evidence a appearing are real false evidence appearing real so that's a deception and a, a form of deceit that we have come into agreement with and accepted it also said up here earlier that the person who accepts the orphan spirit. So it's a point of you coming in agreement with it. You're basically believing a lie of the enemy that nobody loves you. You're unlovable. You're not worthy. Um, you don't have any parents and you may not have any, um, physical parents, or maybe your caregivers weren't the best. There may have been abuse or, um, neglect or in, or things or trauma, things of that nature. But that doesn't mean that you should come in agreement with the fact that you're unlovable and unworthy just because those things happen to you. Doesn't mean that you are those things. Now it says, this is a false mindset. And we know false to be the opposite of truth, a false mindset. Now, what is a mindset? A mindset is an established set of attitudes held by someone. And it's a false mindset that does not line up with the truth of God's word. So it's a lie because we know that God's word is true. The opposite of truth is a lie. And that's why they call this a false mindset because the opposite of true is something that is false. Now it says that the spirit um, is a false belief system put into place by the enemy. Like I said, believing the lies of the enemy, you come into agreement with it and then it has the right. You've opened the door and allowed it to come in. So that's how you accept the orphan spirit in or any spirit. You come into agreement with it. So, and you allow it place and space in your life. So it says the word of God says that we are accepted in the beloved. So it's important to combat all of these lies that the enemy tells you, the things that um, he sets up in your mind. And another thing I wanted to say, when we think about a stronghold, it's in your mind. When we think about a mental fortress, it's a bigger stronghold. It's equivalent to a town or the size of a town in your mind. And it talks about the false mindset. Then it talks about a belief system. Realize and understand that the battlefield of the mind is real. That if the enemy can get your mind, guess what? He can get your heart. He can get your actions and everything that flows from that because he started right here, you know, with your thoughts, with you believing something that is not true, you coming into agreement with it. So now it's almost like calling, it's almost like answering to something that someone calls you that's not true. That's not you. That's not who you are, but you answer to it. So in answering to it, you're coming in agreement and saying and accepting that this is, this is me. This is my name. This is what I will um, be called by and be referred to from this point on. Now it also talks about what uh, a belief system is. Now, once again, this is false. So that means that's a lie, not the truth. This false belief system that's put into place by the enemy what is a belief system? It's a set of principles and tenets which together form the basis of a religion. Religion is actually a spirit. Philosophy is just a way of thinking and um, or a moral code. So basically, once again, the listen to the language set principles, set of uh, established set of attitudes, um, disorders of the mind. Um, military stronghold. All of these have to deal with your thought processes and um, everything that flows from you. Even the Bible says that a man, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the enemy knows that if you come into agreement with his lies and you think and believe that, then you will become that. Even if you were not ordained or destined by God, your heavenly father to become that you will because you believe that about yourself. So we're going to go on. It says so, and it's talking about this uh, false belief system. Oh, let me um, go back. It talks about that we are accepted in the beloved and the orphan spirit. One of the premises is it doesn't feel like it fits anywhere. It doesn't feel like it's loved. It doesn't feel like it's worthy of love. It doesn't um, feel comfortable anywhere. It feels kind of like um, a, a misfit. It doesn't feel like it fits anywhere. It feels like an outcast, an outlaw, and things of that nature. So when it talks about us being accepted in um, 
Christ, this is how we combat this. When the enemy tells you you're not accepted, you're not loved, you're not lovable, you don't deserve love, you're not worthy of love, etc. You let them know that you are accepted. And we find this um, scripture in the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 7. And this is the New Living Translation or the NLT. And it says, therefore, accept each other as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. So this is telling you that you are accepted in Christ. So um, the enemy telling you a lie that you're not loved, you're not worthy of love or whatever lie he's whispering in your ear, you can combat that with the truth, which is the new foundation, which is needed and necessary to uproot and to destroy this um, orphan spirit. So we're going to go forward. It says, um, open... Take, please take time to open your heart and get a revelation of God's love for you and change the direction of your bloodline back to fellowship with God and um, allow him to heal and cleanse your heart. So once again, when they talk about your bloodline, we're speaking uh, and, and calling out the generational curse destroyers because it's not just about you. My four, no more. It's not just about your family of uh, procreation or your children, your husband, yourself, or those that are in your household. It's bigger than you. Um, it started before, way before you were even born or even thought about or even conceived, but it can stop with you once you destroy it. If you do not destroy it, then it will, it has a legal right. Why wouldn't it stop? Because it's been effective for so many generations in your um, bloodline or your lineage. So that's where we get into ancient spirits because they've been around in your bloodline for so many centuries and decades because nobody has decided to stand in the gap and say, the buck stops here. Oh, that's it. It's over. So um, we are going to, and I know you can sense and feel my passion. That's because the Lord has given me um, the mantle of being the generational curse destroyer um, in my family. So that's why I have the passion and that's why I'm calling out for other generational curse destroyers that don't want this to fall on their children and their children's children. And each generation wax worse and worse. That's what the word says. So this is not what we want for our family, friends, and loved ones. So it also says, um, after it talks about allowing God to cleanse, um, to heal first and then cleanse your heart, it says, um, this is the missing link to your freedom, being healed and allowing God to cleanse your heart. So if you want freedom, these are some steps that will need are needed and necessary to progress in your journey towards healing. Now, there's a um, quote here by Aileen Moore. She's actually the one who authored this entire article, and it says a an orphan spirit is an identity that lives apart from Jesus, loving us with his perfect love. So you're choosing to separate yourself. You're choosing to isolate yourself. You're choosing to be withdrawn because you believe the lie that you don't fit anywhere, that you're an outlaw. You've been cast out or cast down um, and you've come into agreement with that. So. All you have to do is turn to God and turn back to his perfect love because he never stopped loving you regardless of the lie that the enemy has told you that you've even begun to believe and come into agreement with. Your heavenly father loves you and nothing you can do, have done or will do will stop that. And it's important for you to know that. Now, I'm going to read a little bit about um, Elena more because she shared, she goes into her personal testimony a, a little bit. So I want you to um, feel, you know, that you know a little bit about this individual. So she's a Caucasian female and her name is Alina Moore. Alina is a passionate on fire for God, freedom fighter and prophetic intercessor operating in the gifts of discernment, words of knowledge and healing, making a difference in the lives of the brokenhearted. She is instilling faith, hope, love, peace, and um, healing through the word of God. She is a light bearer and a carrier of the glory of Jesus Christ, piercing the darkness, helping others find healing and restoration for the wounds of their souls. 
It is her heart's desire to expose the lies of the enemy that are keeping the body of Christ in offense. So you're easily offended or you're offended. Somebody did something to you, you're holding a grudge. You don't want to let them go or you don't want to let that issue go. Bitterness, um, anger, and unforgiveness. These are things that you can't look at a person and, and know that they're walking in unforgiveness. You can't look at a person and know that they're bitter or they're offended or they're angry. You can tell by their actions if you stay around them long enough or their words. Because like they said, actions speak louder than words. Sometimes you can tell, but you can't just look at them and say, oh, they have a problem with unforgiveness. Oh, they're, they have a problem with bitterness. Oh, they have a root of anger inside of them. And um, things of that nature. They're easily offended or they're walking in offense. Things of that nature. So it talks about how unforgiveness is plaguing the body of Christ. It is the heart of the Father to set people free from the bondage of unforgiveness. And there is definitely bondage in unforgiveness. The Bible even talks about if we don't forgive our brothers and sisters, then God won't forgive us. Now, how many of us can afford to allow our sins to be held to our charge? None of us, because Jesus wouldn't have came to, um, to be the propitiation for our sins. He wouldn't have died on the cross and he wouldn't have come back to take the keys to death, hell, and the grave if we uh, could bear our own sins. So it says through imparting healing and deliverance ministry, uh, we are restoring the body of Christ back to the father whom is our life source. God, the father is our life source. And as Alina has been married to Kevin Moore for 29 years. So that's her husband's name, Kevin. The couple reside in Missouri. They have Four children, Jennifer, Jacob, Ashley, and Kevin II, as well as six grandchildren, Connor, Colin, Mason, Elenia, um, Elena, uh, Kevin III, and J uh, Kaysen, Kaysen with a K. So um, just a little bit about the individual that authored this article. Now, as a part of her personal testimony, she has personally experienced so much emotional turmoil from the false religious thinking caused by the enemy. And religion is basically laws, do's and don'ts. And, uh, you can do this. You can't do this. And typically it's usually, it feels like it's usually more that you can't do than it is that you can do. And we know that Jesus became, uh, Jesus did away with the law. Um, when Jesus came, he is the new Testament. And, um, so, uh, she basically says, uh, the religious thinking caused by the enemy wanting freedom for herself and her family generation of curse destroyer um, is what kept her searching for the truth. It says an orphan spirit is an identity that lives apart from Jesus. Once again, um, loving us with his perfect love. That's her quote. Jesus paid a high price for our redemption. We are, um, a kidnapped royalty. So basically the high price that he paid was with his life, his blood, his suffering, his sacrifice, the, him being the ultimate sacrifice, the, um, lamb that was slain, the spotless lamb, the only person that could have stood in the gap for us and taken the punishment for us. So upon salvation, we began a personal relationship with Christ. Um, we begin to have revelation of the ransom he paid, which, which with his life, um, and ransom is usually when somebody is kidnapped, they ask for a ransom. Like you pay me this much money or you give me this and I'll return this person. So in order for us to be returned back to God, because after Adam's, Adam's fall, um, you know, then that put us in and it put us out of right standing with God. And that put us in a bad way, honestly, um, where they used to walk and talk with God in the cool of the day. That was no more. There was a limit um, put up and they could no longer have access to God. All right. So God's love and acceptance of us stand before we were formed in our mother's womb. And God created us to belong and to be treasured. Only the father's presence, his love, his touch, his voice can heal the orphan spirit. And there's one um, 
scripture to back up what she's saying about us um, being accepted and everything before we were formed in our mother's womb that's found in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, one of my favorite scriptures. And then we're going to kind of bring this to a, a close and we'll continue on next week. But I think that's a good place to stop. And I'm going to read that last sentence again about what can um, eradicate the orphan spirit after the scripture. So Jeremiah chapter one, verse five says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, thee is me, you, we, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, you, me, we, um, and I ordained thee, you, me, we, a prophet unto the nations. So God, the father has that much of an intimate relationship with us that he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, before we were even conceived, before your mother and father knew that you were on the scene, that she, before she knew she was pregnant or with seed, God already knew and formed us. So I'm going to read this again. Only the father's, his presence, him being there, his love, his touch, and his voice can heal the orphan spirit. So I want you to prayerfully consider um, and ask the Lord to search you and see if you have any of these issues. If you struggle with anxiety, if you struggle with fear, if you str struggle with separation or fear of separation or separation anxiety, any of these things, the root of it could be the orphan spirit. Don't choose not to be deceived and actually really look to see if this could be. Okay, so until next time, I want you to remember that God and only God has the final say so about where you've been, where you are and where you're going. You're simply in the process of becoming.